Speaker recognizes Representative Stanley. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I, um, I think that just about all of the relevant statements and comments have been made, but if I could just uh, take a moment to uh, try and capsule one sentiment. But the first point that I, I just, you know, the words that I have to describe the last couple of days is what a week. What a week. The, the optic that the world sees is, you know, we're supposed to be the citadel of democracy. And if you saw what I saw uh, yesterday uh, with uh, state troopers storming uh, this house, uh, sir. The, the speaker recognizes Representative Stanley. Please keep your comments to the bill. Speaker, I certainly uh, agree with you. I'll, I'll keep my comments germane to uh, what I came to talk about. I, I, I have a, a little bit of a different path to this spot than most of my colleagues, with the exception of, of, a, two, of, a, of a couple. I served as mayor of Flint for three terms and witnessed our community having to have state financial intervention. I know that there are instances where state intervention is appropriate for a whole host of reasons. But what's more important is not necessarily intervention, but before we get there is a state-local partnership, Mr. Speaker. And when you see the significant erosion of revenue sharing support to local communities, the erosion of support of school districts. Mr. Speaker, the state, and I've said this before, the state doesn't have clean hands when it comes to, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. You don't have to be Einstein or W.E.B. Du Bois to figure this out. If you remove the resources, you don't have to be the majority in the legislature to say these communities are going to cave in on each other. But here's the point. I want to make this quick point, Mr. Speaker. You know, last, um, last year or when we originally took up PA4, many of us on the committee, the local government committee, complained about the fact that we thought that we were moving too fast. In retrospect, we had a lot more time to debate that, the issue that time. But this time around, what we did, no public hearing. What are we saying to the people of our state, Mr. Speaker? Here's the final point that, that I want to just share. And I, you know, I, I'm, I'm a realist. I know how to spell the word pragmatist. That's why I've been around so long. I know how to spell it. I practice it. But here's the point I want to make to you. You know what's more important than a balanced budget in Flint, in Detroit, in Pontiac, and yes, Mr. Pashoka, in Ben Harbor, you know what's more important? A robust democracy, a healthy democracy, a participatory democracy, a representative democracy, a de democracy that th thrives and lives. Now you tell me that you, you send in an emergency manager and that democracy is alive and well. I think not. And so I don't expect that a miracle is going to happen tonight. I just want you all to appreciate, because, you know, I know what the word hypocrisy means. We come here and we talk about liberty. Well, you know what I have to say to that? On the political timeline that we're going to see 10 years from now is going to say, 
BS and AS. BS and AS. Before Snyder and after Snyder. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Representative.